How's it going? It's Lee here. Hope you're well. In this video, I'm going to be checking out the newly released Caustic Mastering app from Single Cell Software. So before we get into the meat and bones of this overview, you may be wondering exactly what mastering is. Well, in a nutshell, basic mastering involves various forms of signal processing to gain a better quality sound from that achieved during the mixing stage. So one of the first tasks we want to complete is actually importing our file to be mastered. So we do that, I'm just going to start a new project here. We do that by touching the area at the top of the app, very obvious, touch to load audio track. So we select that, we then get presented with this file browser and we want to navigate to where our file is located. So mine is on the desktop, it's called trance.wave.wav. I'm going to load that in and then you get this visual representation, this waveform of your sound. So I just want to point out that there are various different formats accepted, including WAV files, OGS, MP3s and FLACs. However, I highly recommend importing the highest resolution file as possible. So in most instances, this will be a WAV file with a sampling rate of at least 44.1 kHz and a high bit depth. This will then allow you to get the best possible sonic outcome from your master track. Bear in mind though that high resolution files will mean larger file sizes. So next we want to start dropping in effects so we can start mastering our file. So to do that we select one of the areas beneath the waveform. There are eight different areas to choose from and we also get presented with eight different effects to choose. So I'm just going to go in and select various different effects and drop them into our effects chain. Obviously this is very rough and dirty. So we can reorder the effects within the effects chain by simply holding down and dragging along the effects chain. We can also bypass an effect by swiping down. And if we want to reactivate an effect, we simply swipe up. Note that the signal flow is from left to right and the actual order of the effects can have an influence on the final sound. So let's take a quick look at the menus. So the main menu is at the bottom left of the app and in here you get to start a new project, load a project, save a project and export your mastered file. There is also an additional menu to the right of the main menu. This is the effects chain menu. This allows you to reset the effects chain back to zero. You can also save an effects chain. So if you're really happy with one that you've set up previously, save it off as a preset and then you can reload that back in. Note though that each individual song may require its own form of treatment. So don't get too caught up in the trap of thinking one solution will fit all. So let's reset this effects chain out and let's start with the graphic equalizer. So hopefully you know what a graphic equalizer is. It basically influences the different tonal amplitudes, the frequencies in the audio spectrum. So this is a 10 band graphic EQ. So that means there are 10 different faders and each individual fader is focused around its own center frequency. Now these lower faders, these are concentrated around the base area. So 31, 63, 125 Hertz. These are around the base region. Your 250 up to around your 1K, 2K, these are around your mid range. And then your 4K plus, these are your treble high end frequencies. There is also another button, a couple of buttons actually on the right hand side. You've got a 6 dB button and a 12 dB button. So the 6 dB kind of does what it says on the tin. You can boost and cut by 6 dB. However, if you want a higher bandwidth, higher dynamic range, you can select 12 dB and boost and cut by 12 dB. There is an additional view to this, to these faders as well. We just select this button on the right hand side here you get this more audio spectrum type view now i prefer this because you get a better representation of what's going on and then you get these 10 knobs which you can tweak to your heart's desire below now one of the disadvantages to a graphic eq is that you can't change these center frequencies however it is quite good for making quick edits especially if you want to get quickly down and dirty with your eq Finally, there is a gain control on the right hand side which allows you to cut or boost the signal coming into the EQ. 
So as well as the graphic EQ, there is another equalizer, and this is my preferred option. It's called a parametric EQ. So it has similar controls to the graphic EQ. You have six bands in total. So by default, you get one activated. To activate all six, you simply swipe up over the different band to activate. To deactivate, you simply swipe down. So with each band, you get the option of having a low pass filter, high pass filter, or band pass filter. But as I mentioned previously, the beauty of this parametric EQ is you can actually choose the center frequency you want to work on. So you've got full control. There are a couple of different options as well to the right hand side of this frequency knob. The first one is the Q control. We can't really see that in action until we give this some gain. So let's boost this up. So the Q control is like the bandwidth knob. So the higher the value, the narrower the band of frequencies being effective. And the lower the Q value, the greater the bandwidth of frequencies being affected. So plenty of control with this parametric EQ, and it's great that you've got six bands in total. As with the graphic EQ, you do have a gain control where you can boost or lower the output coming through. So next on the list, we are going to drop in a stereo imager. And what this does is allows us to narrow or widen the stereo separation of the audio. So there are two areas to this effect. There is the left hand side, which is the low area. And this allows you to play around with the low frequencies and the high area. And this allows you to play around with the high frequencies. So you can narrow the amount of stereo separation or you can increase the amount of stereo separation. There is also a gain control which allows you to boost and cut those particular frequencies. There is a crossover knob which allows you to position exactly where the lower frequencies and high frequencies kick in. There's also the ability to solo the high frequencies which is really useful to get rid of all those low frequencies and see what's going on at the high end and vice versa with the low frequencies. There is also a mono switch just to see how it sounds in mono. As a general rule, you want to make sure that your track sounds just as good in mono as it does in stereo. So next on the list, we have the exciter and this kind of does what it says on the tin. It makes the sound more exciting to the ear. And it apparently does this by subtly enhancing the input signal by adding harmonic noise so there are two different sections available. You have the bass area on the left and then the treble area on the right. So there is a filter that allows you to control the frequency range of the audio that gets fed into the unit. This can be adjusted with this cutoff. There is also the drive knob and this controls the amount of distortion used to create the noise. There is a level which allows you to switch between the wet and dry signal going into the output and there is also an additional control on the treble frequencies which allows you just to add more width. So next on the list we have a compressor so this allows us to compress the dynamic range of the sound. The threshold is the point at which the compressor kicks in so if we've got peaks and peaks going above 12 decibels and we set this to around 15 then they will start getting compressed down. The, the ratio is the amount of compression being applied as we can see on the graph on the right hand side and the knee width changes the harshness of the compression it almost gives it a bit of a, a softer approach with a softer knee. So hard knee is right at the bottom soft knee is at the top and the final controls are the attack, release and makeup. So the attack is at the point at which the compressor kicks in. So a quick attack is straight away. And the release is the point at which the compressor stops working. There is also a makeup gain fader there. So we can increase the volume of the compressed sound to get as close to 0 dB if that's what we're intending to do. 
So next on the list, we have a multiband compressor. So this works very similar to the compressor, except you get three different bands to play with. So you get your bass band, your mid range band, and your treble band. And basically the, this just gives you greater overall control over your compression adjustments. Next on the list, we have a clipper. Now this essentially just chops off the top of the waveform, allowing you to get a louder sound. There are a few different controls to play with, gain, saturation and softness, and some visual representation of the clipping that's happening here on the right hand side. So last but not least, we have the look ahead limiter. Now this ensures that the signal gets compressed before it clips. So just before I go and stop looking at this mastering app, I just want to briefly talk about some of the live visual indicators that are integrated throughout this app and they're really quite cool. So on the graphic EQ, you get a, a dancing green bar, a green line that represents the frequencies at a particular point in time. So if I just briefly play my track back. You can see them dancing up and down there. However, if I start making some adjustments on this graphic EQ, a new line will be introduced. Um, this line will be orange. This will be the input signal and the green line then becomes our new output signal. So. I've lowered the bass frequencies by a lot, so we should see this orange bar dancing alongside the green bar. So just remember, orange is input signal, green is output signal. So there is a similar effect within the parametric EQ. The imager has a visual window here, which allows you to visually see the stereo spread. The exciter has similar functionality built in. The compressor has a live visual indicator too. as does the multiband compressor. The clipper too. So there we have it, a quick overview of the mastering app. Now I'm going to drop a link in the description from where you can download this. I highly recommend it. I think it's such a fantastic piece of kit available on your mobile to master your tracks on the go. So there we have it. I hope you found this useful and I'll hopefully see you again soon. Cheers for now.